And uh, Valerie Schreiber is going to help me show you some foods that uh, uh, have a, a low or a high uh, glycemic index. So Valerie, what can you tell us here about these foods that you have? Well, I'm first going to show you the different foods that are high and the foods that are low on the glycemic index. And it's simply a marker telling us, as Dr. Agatha said, how fast the, our sugar goes up according to what foods we eat. And some of them are quite surprising as to the ones that will do that to us. And an example is, is, is potato, as I have right here. It, will, it is high on the glycemic index, so is corn, and so are carrots. Now, does that mean that, oh, I can't ever have a potato or a carrot or a ear of corn again? No, it doesn't mean that. But it means that if you're going to eat these vegetables, then you have to figure out a food that would be high fiber so that it will slow the, the rise in your blood sugar. And so you don't want to eat a whole meal of foods that are going to be, cause your blood sugar to go very quickly up. You want to eat foods that will cause it to go slower. And so those are your high fiber foods. And God has given us that in his vegetable kingdom as well. So now what you would want to do is, let's say, oh, I want, I want a corn on the cob or I want a baked potato. How you would do that is you would go ahead and have yourself like a spinach salad or, you know, a good salad that would have broccoli, cauliflower in it. And, or, you could take some lentils or soy. And both of these are very low on the glycemic index. And so you could make burgers, loaves, all sorts of things you can make out of soy. Soy is extremely low on it and so beneficial for many other uh, things for our body as well. And lentils are extremely tasty. And so you could have this and a nice salad and then you could go ahead and have your ear of corn or your baked potato. And it would be quite permissible to do that. Now another area to, be con to consider on the glycemic index is bread. And unfortunately, even in the whole grain breads, it will tend to rise it uh, a little swifter. So if you want to eat bread, you would do the same thing that I explained to you just a minute ago. You would go ahead and have a good salad with lots of fiber and and or a good legume like uh, uh, pintos or something with soy tofu would be another good one but another good substitute for bread would be wasa that is very high in fiber and this is rye and it's very high in fiber and very low on the glycemic index so you could alternate having bread and then have wasa at another time so that you could still enjoy having something either crunchy or kind of bready. What if you put uh, the almond butter that you previously made on yeah. the bread? Now you could go ahead and put almond butter on here and that would slow it. And so you could go ahead and have your almond butter on your bread and it would be permissible to eat that. Now another thing is, you know, people love pancakes and waffles. Well, the standard pancake mixes and waffles are very questionable and they will go ahead and, and shoot your, your sugar up high. So the best ones to get, and I'm telling you, they make the best waffles and pancakes you ever ate, happens to be buckwheat flour and soy flour. And what's so nice about soy flour is that it will uh, it acts like a leveling in there. It'll rise them up and make them nice and fluffy and soft and you can make the best pancakes and you can make the best waffles out so of soy flour. Have, you don't have to use uh, baking soda or baking no, powder? No, you do not have to use it. Um, the soy uh, the puffs soy, up a little bit? The soy just puffs them up and makes them nice and, and fluffy. And the steam from your waffle iron does the rest? Oh yes, and they're just, and they're delicious and they don't affect the... It makes me hungry just to think I of it. I know it, I know it, it does me too. And we'll have some uh, banana ice cream on that waffle? You could have banana <laughs> ice cream on that waffle. Yes, you could have banana ice cream on that waffle and put some strawberries on top yeah. and you would be just fine. Um, let me see, there's... Fiber, as we said a few minutes ago, does slow the glycemic index. Another thing that eating a large meal will rise your sugar, your glycemic index. So it's important that if you're having problems with diabetes that you want to eat smaller meals. Now this doesn't mean, okay, I can eat six meals a day. No, it means the regular meals that you're eating, whether it be two or three, you eat smaller meals. And then you will find that your sugar level will not rise as rapidly. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, the very, those are very good things to know about uh, the glycemic index and how we can handle this mm -hmm. and, and how we can make it so that uh, even though 
we may eat something that has a pretty high glycemic index. Uh, if we manage our diet in just the right way, then uh, we're going to be able to, to take care of things well. Now type 1 diabetes is never handled with a fast. But type 2 diabetes can very properly be handled with a fast. In fact, uh, that's one of the standard treatments that we use for that. And uh, uh, I would like to uh, tell you just a little bit about some of the experiences that we have had with fasting. We have had many people who have come to UT Pines, type 2 diabetics, uh, who are on 70 or 80 or 90 units of insulin. We give them a fast, and of course they don't take insulin, they don't take food during that time. They only take water and clear herb teas, and as they take these, uh, then they, when we uh, finish with the fast, and sometimes that's two days, sometimes it's three days, sometimes it may be up to five days that we will have the person to fast. But as soon as they come off the fast, we may find that their insulin requirements have halved, so that we are no longer using 70 or 80 or 90 units, but now we may be using 20 or 30 or 40 for that individual. And as we continue to help them to lose weight and uh, to exercise more, as we do these things, then the person slowly gets off insulin. Once in a while, we'll have a person who has a lot of the oral anti-diabetic agents that they're using, and uh, we need to fast, we need to have them take a fast too. Uh, for these individuals, if they come to our center, then we can easily fast them four or five days when they're right under our care. But uh, if they're at home, then we tell the person not to fast more than a day or two per week. So they can fast on Monday, and then they could fast again perhaps on Thursday. And uh, again, uh, the person uh, who is on these agents can usually stop taking them uh, gradually as they get better in control of themselves. I hope that your uh, understanding of diabetes has been increased and that uh, you will improve your uh, glycemic index.